Always try to hold on to some hope when you live in Chicago, when you live in Cook County, but with Kim Fox and the Safety Act, I mean, it's unbelievable. We have 90 plus people out right now this morning on electronic monitoring who have committed violent crimes. No, no. Carjackings, attempted murders, uh, aggravated assault, otherwise known as rape. Yeah, you know, that's because that was her goal. I mean, she wants, you know, she's emphasizing mitigation and rehabilitation rather than high conviction rates and a shift from prosecuting low level and nonviolent crimes. And that's what she's done. And now there's no bail. Yeah. Zero bail. I wonder what the bail bondsmen are doing now. Do you know? Because that was a whole, that was a job. That was a profession. That was a thing. And there's no no bail. So there's no need for bail's bondsmen. You're not feeling my empathy for the bail's bondsmen. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think Illinois has bondsmen, do they? Well, we don't now because we don't have yeah. bond. Yeah. People used to be let out on bond, and yeah. then they'd lend you money and, you know, the whole thing, the whole racket. But anyway, yeah. so we can change the trajectory, or can we? With that, let's welcome back to the program Bob Fioretti, former alderman for the second ward. And, Mr. Fioretti, we are going through the list of offices that you ran for. We're gonna, I'm just going to try to get this right. You ran for mayor in 2015, 2018. You ran for Cook County Board President. You ran for Secretary of State. Is that correct? No, not that one. Not no. that one. Oh, see, we are wrong. Thanks, hey, Quinn. Uh, just name them all, and, uh, and, and you can go yes, County no, board maybe president. sometimes. But I was right, Cook County Board President, right, against Preckwinkle. I think Correct. I've voted for you every time that I possibly can because I believe in you. So what are your chances of being the next Cook County State's Attorney, and what are you doing to try and secure that vote? Well, I'm running on the Republican, uh, under the Republican label, and I am in – every community, everywhere I can be, uh, raising the message uh, of the system that is uh, almost broken here, but I think it still can be fixed. But the, the question has been in the past about raising the money. Uh, and I have been cut off by the powers that be uh, and the political ruling class about raising money. Uh, and they've made sure that they put me, try to put me in a corner. Yeah, I think you may recall they remapped me out of my ward. I remember uh, in that. Fact, my home wasn't even in it. And what was that all about? It was about the political ruling class continuing to make money. I mean, they instituted the remap ahead of time so Burke and Solis and parties can get the, the post office, the 76 acres, and a lot of other areas under their domain so they can exploit for their own pocketbooks. I mean, I feel the time is now that we need to change this system. I mean, we see the, uh, you started off talking about these uh, criminals out there. Well, you know, I'm running because enough really is enough. Uh, our lives are becoming some sort of a script for bad movies uh, as uh, these punks and thugs, uh, you know, they live out their video game fantasies in our streets. And our leadership of this county, instead of trying to uh, you know, arrest those and uh, they are shutting down uh, the jail but to balance the budget and uh, they let these criminals run loose, and, and they do it without any regard to our public safety. And that is what we're seeing now. And I, I'm standing up and I'm saying it again. Enough is enough and we need to do something. Uh, look at all the small businesses. Look at all the large businesses that are leaving the city of Chicago because of this runaway crime uh, effort uh, that is underway, that nobody can be arrested here. And I've come up with five different points that I hope can change, uh, and you said the trajectory. Uh, I hope it does that. And I'm the only candidate that has come up with it. Well, what are the five uh, points? Can you tell us? Well, yes. Uh, I'm going to say to the prosecutors at 26th Street, uh, you're going to start prosecuting crimes, or otherwise there's the door. Uh, to the families of victims, I'm telling them I'm going to fight for you, uh, and we're going to uh, you know, we will prosecute those responsible uh, and those that have created the, these heinous crimes. Uh, three, to the experienced prosecutor that have left this office in frustration, I'm going to say, come on back. We need you. We need people that understand the criminal system and experienced prosecutors that know this system and will prosecute the criminals. 
uh, for to the police officers. I have your back. It's as simple as that. And I'm going to visit police stations throughout this county and tell them, you know, you bring in the crooks and we will prosecute them. And then number five, and we see it every day in the newspapers right now, fighting corruption is really one of my highest priorities. Uh, The Cook County State's Attorney has not only the ability, but they have the duty uh, to bring cases against corruption and white collar crime, both political and private. And I'm going to do so and make sure that we clean up this county. Those are the five points. And, and it takes a, an effort of people getting out and voting in November uh, and making, and we can make the difference. I see no difference between the Democrats. They may talk a little bit here or there, but uh, uh, there's really nothing be, uh, between them that really is any different. Hey, Bob, how's it going? It's John. I, I forget where we just met. Each, we were just at an event together. I forget where. And uh, I told you I got to get you on black and right. But, you know, Cook County, last Republican state's attorney was Jack O'Malley. I mean, right. this guy got 1.2 million votes in Cook County to 800,000 800, by Patrick O'Connor back in 90, 1992. Uh, how do you get beyond that scarlet letter, especially in Cook County, when uh, I believe there's only like um, what, what 100 and some thousand registered Republicans in Cook County? Uh, more to independents. What's your message to that independent crowd? To say come and I know you gave out your points, but how do you win in in a predominantly Democrat county? Well, I don't believe people are going to go blindly in the polls right now. Uh, granted, many will, and they vote the Democratic way because that's the Chicago way. But I think they're feeling the difference. They're feeling high taxes. Um, they're fe- and the unfortunate set of. Uh, uh, facts is that people silently, and I've said it since I was first elected in uh, 07, people vote with their feet. And I saw it then, and I'm seeing the floodgates are open here. But we can turn the tide, and uh, uh, they're feeling the, uh, the pressure. People are walking out of their homes, and they have to look around. Mm-hmm. Uh, they feel unsafe. They don't have an educational system that they can believe in and send their kids. Uh, we can turn things around, but uh, you know, it's going to require people voting uh, for, for a Republican who believes in fiscal. And I have always voted this. And, and that's why people always thought when I was in the city council, I was a Republican then because I voted for fiscal responsibility. I voted for uh, family values. I voted for safe streets, strong communities. I voted against six of the eight budgets that I could. Uh, and uh, one was a recession budget under daily that was very tight uh and the other one uh under the first one that rom came into and uh uh all of them you know i look back and uh you know people if we could have gathered the support but you know the power structures here in cook county yep. dominate yep. and they want to make sure that people are, in a sense, they follow their lead as they line their pockets, yeah. and uh, the public began. And, and Bob, Bob, and, and I think we just had that, that what, what, what you just said, in the 2020, 2020, 2022 gubernatorial race, that was on the ballot. People don't feel safe. People, um, lack of educational resources, and, and just bad education in the city of Chicago through uh, the fault of CTU. That was on the ballot, and Prisker still walloped Darren Bailey in 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 Cook County. I, right. I think Pritzker won because of the abortion issue. Well, yeah, of course he, he that won. Was, because, which, as which soon as Roe v. Wade, back. I'll never forget. I, I, I died inside because right. I thought oh, I was watching TV going, oh, right. Pritzker just won re-election. Yeah, I just, and and yeah. he bought the election. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, look what's happening out there. This political ruling structure is allowing. Uh, big money. The Democrats are more of a special interest. They forgot the middle class. Uh, you know, I grew up in a middle class neighborhood in Roseland. Uh, I'm proud of the people I know the, uh, from Roseland. I'm, I'm still proud of the neighborhood of Pullman uh, and what we do down there. I'm going to tell you, uh, we have to get together and fight and, and people have to come out and vote. Uh, whether you look at the mayoral one uh, they were out organized uh, the Vallis campaign, and he lost because he was out organized and he spent uh, poorly. 
but they he tried to have a message, and there was, you know, no matter which way you look at it, the uh, public sector unions have become the new uh, political force here in this uh, city and county and state. Yeah. Uh, and, and Bob, we get, we're getting short money, on time. Bob, Bob, we're getting short on time, but I, I, I want to, I mean, you see people like Mark Carter, Kay Winding, Tyrone Muhammad. I mean, these people are going viral, these black community leaders. Have you reached out to any of these black community leaders to say, hey, how can you guys help shift and change what's happening in Cook County? Well, to I, 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 have in, as well. I have in the past, and uh, they're part of a structure of how to reach into the black community, but my, my ties are deep in the black community. I'm well known. I fought for... Uh, uh, those that were wrongfully in prison, and yet at the same time, I believe in good, strong police uh, uh, accountability and, and a good uh, police force. And uh, I am going to be reaching out to uh, all those folks that you've just said. And, and uh, we have touched base, but we haven't made firm commitments on how we proceed. But uh, the answer is yes. Yeah, Paul McKinley, all those guys. Um, oh, Paul, guys. Paul's, uh, Paul, he's uh, not afraid to go in the neighborhoods. Yeah. Good. Yeah, because there's there's somebody else that you're running against that is afraid to go into the neighborhoods and go out and campaign, which just floors really? me. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, I, and one of the Democrats, she's afraid to go into the community. So uh, I'm willing to walk down the streets. I'm willing to talk to the people and listen to their pain and suffering. And I doubt whether either one of these um, uh, Democrats have ever been to. Uh, a funeral in the black community of, of people that have been slain, the people that have been shot uh, and killed. Uh, I, I have been endorsed by mothers of, uh, uh, who have had their sons uh, and daughters killed in the past. Uh, this is, you know, we are at the turning point here in this county. And this is it. We have, uh, this is D-Day for this yeah. county. What and in the hell do you have now. to lose is the question. Right. Exactly. All right, All right Bob, if you're ready, we're going to have to leave it there. Two-term Chicago Second Ward Alderman, Second Ward Democratic Committeeman, currently candidate for Cook County State's Attorney. Bob, where can people get more information about your campaign? Uh, if you're ready for Cook, uh, you can see me online there and uh, uh, go from there and follow me on Twitter and uh, a couple of other of those social platforms. All right. If you're ready for Cook, thank you so much you. and uh, appreciate having you on. And of course, though, one thing I love thank about you. Bob is that uh, back in 2015, this was his campaign ad when he ran for mayor. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Hot dogs, pizza, sports, and spaghetti. If you love Chicago, gotta love Fioretti. He fights for your rights on the council floor. He sponsors legislation. He does so much more. Look at the ward he revitalized. Oh. Look at the city rom privatized. Hot I like dogs, the pizza, sports, and spaghetti. Okay, wait, all right, hold on. You like this one better? Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, we have a new system here. I like this. This SB. was 2018. Uh, yeah. For the people and better people. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? I like this. Are you ready? 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 This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560. The Answer. Dan Profton, Amy Jacobson here. And if you're a small business owner or you make the marketing or advertising decisions for a business, then this message is for you. Our annual Food for the Poor campaign is underway. And this year, we're helping to raise money for children and their families in Latin America and the Caribbean who are desperate for access to food. Millions of people, including many children, are suffering during this season of economic decline, unemployment, and rising food prices. Here's how you and your business can be part of the solution. Become a food Food for the Poor Business Benefactor. Just make a $2,500 tax-deductible donation to Food for the Poor, and AM560 will give you 40 one-minute commercials to air here on AM560 The Answer between 5 a.m. and 8 p.m. Monday through Friday at no additional cost to you. It's the best deal in all of Chicago radio. Just call Anjanette Natowski at 847-472-8951. Again, that's 847-472-8951. Or go to 560theanswer.com slash 